The first half of the month was relatively busy for the major currencies, but what can we expect to see moving forward? We'll discuss this as well as plenty more with Bob Mason from FX Empire. This is The Week Ahead. Hey Bob, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Let's uh, jump straight into it. I mentioned in the intro that the first half of the month was relatively busy for the major currencies. What can we expect to see for the major currencies during the week ahead? It's a particularly quiet first half of the week with no real stats except for US existing home sales figures due out on Wednesday. So real area of focus turns to Thursday where you got GFK consumer figures out of the U Germany and the US weekly jobless claims figures. Expect those to garner plenty of interest especially the jobless claims, um, these need to continue on a downward trend. So any any upward trend as a result of this new spike in COVID-19 numbers, and you know that's going to test market resilience. Then focus shift to Friday, and it's a busy day on Friday. It's a lion's share of the stats, and you've got private sector PMI numbers for July. Now, these are particularly important. Um, we're going to need to see a marked improvement in private sector activity and service sector activity in, in particular, when we're considering the likes of the UK, the US and the Eurozone. So those are going to be the key drivers in the week. So it's really stacked into the second half of the week on for the pound, the euro and the dollar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fantastic. And Bob, elsewhere, what about the Commonwealth currencies? For the Canadian dollar, you've got retail sales figures and inflation figures due out on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's the main area of focus. Um, expect that to garner plenty of attention, particularly retail sales. That's going to be a reflection of consumer confidence and what kind of economic recovery there's going to be on the consumption front. For New Zealand and the Kiwi dollar, you've got trade data at the end of the week. Obviously, that is particularly relevant um, for the Kiwi dollar. Um, for the Aussie dollar, nothing to consider in the week. So expect COVID-19 news updates, uh, um, geopolitical risk, ultimately to be the key drivers in the week. So it looks like no major releases regarding the Commonwealth currencies then. Let's move on to the Asian markets. What are we expecting to see there? For the Japanese yen, we've got trade data and inflation figures to focus on uh, in the first half of the week. It's a shortened week with the Japanese markets on holiday late in the week. So will these have any material influ influence on the yen? Unlikely. Um, Japanese yen remains wedged at the 106, 107 level, um, despite you know spikes in COVID-19 numbers with the dollar still the go-to currency in times of risk aversion. There's nothing for the one for the markets to consider, um, not, no data out of China. So that leaves um, geopolitics and focus and any rising tensions between the US and China. And I expect the yuan to take a slide. Um, other than that, nothing to consider. And finally, Bob, elsewhere, let's discuss uh, geopolitics and other non-macroeconomic data. What are we expecting to see there across the globe? Yeah, away from the economic calendar, well, you've got to be starting to pay attention to you know, the US presidential election polls, you know, and the fact that Trump is lagging behind Biden and what strategies he's going to take on to narrow the gap. Uh, you know, obviously, we've got the race on for COVID-19 vaccine. You know, that really has to be Trump's, you know, leading card, really, for a second win. Um, you know, if that vaccine doesn't come in time, then, you know, these spikes in COVID-19 numbers are really going to play havoc on the US economy and ultimately, uh, you know, reduce the chances of Trump's victory in the elections. Uh, he's going to continue to attack China, undoubtedly. Um, let's see how China responds. At some point, China's just going to say enough's enough. You know what, you're going to lose the election. So we've got nothing to do with you. We'll wait. We'll wait till November, and, you know, for Biden to enter. And then we can, you know, they can then start having meaningful conversations and discussions to get trade back on track. Um, yeah, so it should expect the quiet week on the data front to be particularly choppy, you know, on the COVID-19 and geopolitical risk front in the week. And, you know, last but not least, the ever never ending story of Brexit. So will there be any focus on that? You know, fisheries and trade remain the key drivers for the pound on the Brexit front. Bob, fantastic. Thank you very much. Look after yourself and I'm sure we'll speak to you again very soon indeed. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget if you want to watch more videos like this as well as other content involving the markets, head over to dukescobby.tv and across all our social media platforms as well. Take care and goodbye.